Hi everybody and welcome back to my modeling channel. So today I'm gonna build that uh, Airbus A320neo from Provel on scale 144. So let's open the box and see what we have inside. So let's start with the instruction sheet. So everything is as usual in colors. Uh, there's a lot of documentation and apparently this time uh, there has been some modification on the uh, old uh, on the old uh, mold from um, Revel so there has been some modification to the kit. Uh, the decal sheet is pretty documented with lots of colors especially for the uh, for the engines so this seems to be a uh, quite detailed so uh, I'm gonna enjoy this now let's have a look on the decal sheet so the decal sheet is over here and as we can see it's for the new Louvain of Lufthansa and we have also uh, some details for the cockpit window so uh, by experience they were always very useful and um, pretty good quality as well as uh, as decals no, now let's start to see what we have inside. So first we have a stand, because as far as I understood that kit hasn't been delivered with um, the landing gear options to be up or down, but it will be retracted. So here is the first sprue where we have uh, the nose wheel uh, well and of course, we have on that part the uh, wing. Apparently, on this type of the, on this position, they will be in uh, the up position in flight. Now we have a new uh, fuselage as well. It seems to be uh, there is a lot of similarity with the Zvezda kits, where we have a clear path for the cockpit and we can make the. A detail cockpit as well and of course uh, the difference is the radome and the nose on uh, this sprue we have uh, all the details for the cockpit itself with the engine instruments panel uh, the windows and of course all the doors now there is uh, one box which seems to be only for the engines which I will build a little bit later on as I have to, uh, I will need to do some painting before assembling all the engines. And the last part are the windows. So the big difference is on the earlier uh, Revel kit, we didn't have any, any windows. So I used to fill them up with putty, but this time I won't have to do, I will glue them up and put some putty on top. And we also have that cockpit window has been uh, hasn't been pressed a little bit so there will be some uh, minor adjustment so uh, here is this new kit so let's start building and see what kind of result we can get I will start this model by uh, removing the fuselage from the screws then of course I will uh, on this one uh, add uh, the window frames uh, to the models and the fuselage I will now uh, assemble the cockpit and uh, that will uh, add a little bit more uh, structures basically on the fuselage itself but uh, as I will uh, normally do the cockpit with windows it's not really necessary to build it. So uh, after that of course I'll have to add uh, the putty on the, to fill all the gaps and on that aircraft particularly uh, I, will, uh, I will do that also and I will add the putty on uh, the fuselage itself and on the window and uh, as I will use decals. After that, of course, I had to uh, assemble uh, the wings and uh, for uh, an easier transport, I didn't put the wing less immediately. I will do that uh, later on. And uh, shortly after that, of course, uh, as I had some uh, gaps on the tail, uh, I had to use some clamps and uh, glue it a little bit later. Shortly after this, I had to remove all uh, the antennas and of course uh, I will add uh, some more putty and after that uh, once the putty and the glue is done on the, on the tail I will uh, finish by putting the, the radome on the nose itself and of course the window frame. Wow. 
Once I wait for the curing time of the putty, I had to do a lot of sanding down, of course. And uh, sometimes uh, I still have some gap. I didn't uh, use enough putty, so uh, in this case, normally I use a different color putty. So I always use Tamiya putty because it's very user-friendly, I would say. And uh, after that, of course, lots of the sanding down again until uh, you get uh, the result you are expecting. As there is no undercarriage on this aircraft, now I'm uh, preparing the stand that I'm going to use uh, later on to uh, present uh, the aircraft. And now I'm gluing uh, the winglets uh, basically to the wings. I will now start working on the engines, especially the, the paint jobs. And basically you always have a, a ring of a very light green color um, located inside the engines. So, uh, the fans are on a black color and uh, the leading edge of the fan are uh, metallic gray. So that requires a little bit more work than uh, the traditional uh, engines on the, the A320. After that, of course, while uh, the painting was uh, the paint was curing, I had to uh, add some uh, putty on the, the junction between the wings and the fuselage, on the wing roots and of course on the wing beds. And of course, uh, while uh, the putty was curing, I revert back to the paint uh, on the engines. So now it's time for the, the final uh, sanding on the, on the wing roots and uh, that took a little bit of time of course but uh, after that as you can see I didn't add the engines yet and uh, that models require basically a painting separately uh, from the engines as uh, I was trying to get uh, the best uh, result as I could. So of course uh, the engines were uh, a little bit more work than uh, the other ones as there is a little bit more details and uh, after that, well, I will uh, assemble the engines and I will paint them separately again from the fuselage. It's now time for the paint shop. So uh, for this, I use uh, a metallic uh, gray to do uh, all uh, the leading edge and the uh, anti-ice part of uh, the aircraft. And uh, of course, after that, uh, I was painting the fuselage in, uh, in a glossy white uh, from Tamiya. So that took a little bit of time. And uh, once uh, I managed to get uh, the proper result, uh, I had to put about two layers of, uh, of coating on the aircraft itself. We'll now add uh, basically uh, the anti-ice part uh, on the engines uh, themselves and that required a little bit of adjustments uh, more than uh, usual. I'm preparing now some uh, masking tape for the tail of the aircraft and uh, that will uh, help me to paint uh, basically the blue section uh, of the tail for this uh, Lufthansa aircraft. So uh, after that, of course, I wrap the aircraft in a, in a plastic wrap to avoid to have uh, paint uh, going on the other side, of course. It's now time for uh, the final touch-up uh, on the engines, so uh, I had to paint basically the metallic part of uh, the uh, engine uh, exhaust and uh, that required a little bit of uh, adjustments on the various colors and of course a little bit of uh, weathering, uh, but uh, the result was uh, actually uh, pretty good and uh, I was quite satisfied with that. I'm using basically some uh, makeup kits uh, from uh, Tamiya 
And uh, once uh, this was all done, uh, it was time for uh, decaling the aircraft. So for this, I still didn't glue the stabilizer uh, on the on the tail, and uh, I finished uh, all uh, basically the, the decals before doing this. now time for the final detailing, basically adding uh, nav lights and uh, rotating beacons and of course shortly after that I will uh, add uh, the engines on the model and uh, the stab. After that what I did is uh, I had to add uh, a clear coat of varnish as uh, we could see basically the masking tape uh, on, the, on the white part. So that helped me basically to remove all the marks and give a better uh, finish aspect of course. So this is the final result of that uh, Airbus A320neo from Revel. So uh, I have to say that I was quite satisfied. The model is pretty easy by itself. There is of course a little bit more detailing than on the 320 Classic. I hope you enjoyed that model with me. If you did so, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel and I will uh, see you soon for uh, another model with you. Thank you for watching.